Rare diseases are actually not that rare. Something like one in 10 Americans has a rare condition. When you don't know what your diagnosis is, the physicians don't know how to counsel families. They often don't know how to treat them. To be undiagnosed is to be stuck in that moment where you're waiting for your test results and you know you're sick, but those test results never come. It's living with uncertainty every single day, not knowing if you're taking care of yourself correctly, not knowing what to do next. Totally out of left field, I received a call from Katya, and Katya told me about a group of individuals who are suffering, and they've been undiagnosed. They've been referred to me. As I listened, I was more and more impressed how dire their circumstances were. I suggested to her, that having many sets of eyeballs looking at her case and that of her colleagues through the contest might actually work. What's the Clarity Challenge? It's a process to standardize and show the best practice of genomic diagnosis. We do it by posing a challenge embodied in individuals who really need a diagnosis. The goals of Clarity One were to develop some of the computer-based methodology for sequencing somebody's DNA. Now in Clarity Undiagnosed, we're working on the medical genetic aspects of taking that information and understanding it and returning it to patients and their physicians in a meaningful way. Medicine, as it really is practiced today, is not a team effort. At best, it's a series of solo performances, not a group of individuals working together to solve a problem. In this contest, it's just the opposite. We bring many teams, doctors, researchers, to the patient so they get the benefit of all those opinions without the real trauma, heartbreak, cost. I ask you, isn't that the way it should be? This year in Clarity Undiagnosed, we have a really robust response to our call for contestants. People with expertise in medical genetics, bioinformatics, the judging criteria for this contest were clarity, both for the doctor and ideally also for the patient, accuracy, and medical soundness. My hope is that we can move beyond finding genetic mutations to curing some of these. And if we can do that for even a small subset of our patients, I will feel that this has all been worthwhile. If I were a patient, a payer, if I were a policymaker, and I saw the results of the Clarity Contest, I'd say, that's what I want. That's what I'll pay for. That's what I want to incent the medical system to deliver. I'm Alan Beggs. I'm the director of the Manton Center for Orphan Disease Research here at Boston Children's. And with me is Dr. Catherine Brownstein. Together, we are two of the organizers for the Clarity Challenge. Um, and I hope you'll excuse me. I'm told that if we go over time, will be lynched because you all want to go eat lunch. <laughs> so I'm going to use my notes here. So 26 multidisciplinary teams from seven countries, representing nine academic groups and 17 companies, nine judges with expertise in molecular genetics, medical informatics, computer science, neurology, genetics, and anesthesiology. In fact, Chuck Birdie, who you just heard speak. 21 completed entries, over 1,000 pages of tables and text describing the results of each entrance analysis. Over 100 different genes, 100 possible genes, potentially involved in the diagnoses in five families. And most importantly, five families. Five families with rare and undiagnosed medical conditions looking for answers. So what are we to make of this? Well, first. These were the toughest of the tough cases. These were families who had undergone a diagnostic odyssey for many years without answers. It's safe to say that whole genome sequencing in each case did not lead to any smoking gun mutations that were clearly the cause of the patient's disease. So this is what Bruce just referred to, the dilemma we have these days in genomics. But in each case, the teams found and reported one or more suspicious variants that might explain some or all of the symptoms. In each case, the results opened up new possibilities and have led to additional research studies to validate and extend the findings. Patients with undiagnosed disorders can feel lost with no rational basis to anticipate the future. For some, like 64-year-old Jeff Lowe, who you just saw in the video, a former world-class mountain climber who suffered a progressive neurologic disorder since 1998, the results provided some measure of comfort because they ruled out certain forms of ALS. 
As the father of another family said, we're still lost in the wilderness, but now we have a compass, so we have a better idea of where we're going. The families didn't just participate for their own benefit, however. On a broader level, the results revealed some important aspects of whole genome sequencing in 2015. The first is that without a clear and recognizable answer for families with rare or never before seen disorders, diagnostic sequencing today leads to reporting of a wide variety of potential disease gene candidates, most of which are almost certainly not the cause of each patient's condition. Uh, this perhaps isn't terribly surprising because with over 7,000 different rare diseases and only 3 to 4,000 of disease genes known out of our complement of 20, 25,000 different genes, uh, we need to amass genomic data from as many families as possible. And as you've been hearing over the past two days, it's really important, most important, to make these data available in ways that are searchable and accessible to patients, physicians, and researchers the world over. So the second very heartening result is that despite the complexities and uncertainties inheriting, inherent in interpreting complex genomic data, many groups are now developing clear and understandable formats for providing this information to patients and their physicians. Clarity Undiagnosed has provided us with an unparalleled opportunity to crowdsource the best practices for clinical diagnostic laboratories for interpreting and reporting genomic information. The independent panel of judges identified three teams whose entries exemplified the best practices. So without further ado, Catherine is going to tell us about these teams and announce the winner. Thank you so much, Alan. The first of the two runners-up identified five variants of potential significance in four of the families. Their clinical reports were clear, provided relevant medical advice for potential next steps, and importantly, described the limitations of their findings, including lists of candidate genes they examined and ruled out. Congratulations to Dr. Michelle Cargill and her team from Invite Corporation of San Francisco. The second runner-up also identified five variants the judges felt were relevant for four of the families. In particular, through careful analysis of raw sequencing data, they were the only group to identify a potential mosaic deletion, an important candidate gene for one of the families, and their use of human phenotype ontology terms to define the clinical presentation and filter the list of candidate variants was a particular strength. Congratulations to Dr. Jeffrey Gulcher and his team from Wuxi Nextcode. The winning team submitted an entry that the judges felt stood out head and shoulders above the rest. Their clinical reports were beautifully organized and easy to read. Clear and understandable information on each variant and the data supporting its pathogenicity was prov provided in tabular format along with concise summaries of the clinical implications. Importantly, negative results from consideration of candidate genes based on the patient's clinical findings were also listed. An outstanding feature was an accompanying genetic counseling summary for each case, presenting the results in an accessible and understandable terms for the patients and their families. It is a great pleasure to announce that the winner of the Clarity Undiagnosed Challenge and a $25,000 prize is the multidisciplinary academic team from Nationwide Children's Hospital, led by Drs. Don Korsemeyer and Peter White. Oh, thank you. So, uh, Peter, would you like to say a few words sure. about uh, what this has meant to your team? Yeah, sure. So Don and I represent actually a large team of, uh, from Nationwide Children's that included genomics researchers, bioinformaticians, big data scientists, genetic counselors, medical geneticists, and clinicians. Um, in her opening, dress, uh, opening address yesterday, uh, Sandra Fenwick stated that collaboration was a key factor in being successful when it comes to the challenge of genomics. And that was especially the case of, in our experiences for our team. We want to thank the leadership of Boston Children's and Harvard Medical School for their leadership in setting an example in that regard to collaboration. 
The Clarity Challenge um, was a, a great way to do this, reaching out to the genomics community um, to help with setting standards and to help find a diagnosis for these families. We're especially thankful to the families themselves for their bravery in sharing their stories with us and for their bravery in sharing their genomic data, um, for allowing us and the other teams that competed to help try to find them some answers. Thank you.